Hey everybody, I wanted to do a little bit of a, a re-review before the Sigma expansion came out, Showdown in the Badlands. Uh, I did a star rating for each of the classes. I split this up into four distinct videos, like with three classes covering like each video. I know that doesn't quite work out with the maths, but bear with me. And then we had the neutrals at the end of it. Uh, so I wanted to, you know, go through and see how close I was to the actual ratings. Uh, if you're interested in seeing these types of videos, then let me know, and I will do one for each of the other uh, classes that we covered. So for this video, we're going to go through Death Knight, Druid, and Demon Hunter, because we went through alphabetical order. Uh, so I cut down some of the, 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 the key tidbits and the star ratings, and I'll talk through them. Uh, now I'm not so excited, though, unfortunately. So, Pile of Bones, Rescue the Pit Boss, and Crop Rotation, one star. I think the excavation package, as the Hearthstone team intended it, is going to be too slow. And moreover, the big payoff is, you know, resurrecting your highest cost minion, right? Unfortunately, one of the last cards revealed was Reno. And I think you're going to be getting Resca up around this turn 8 mark. And if he gets reno and just whooshed away, it doesn't die and therefore it can't be resurrected. Which means your deck will be worthless. Therefore, I think it as... Much as I'd like Pile of Bones to work, every time you, you know, you excavate, you get a, a little 2-1 nod onto your, your card. I just think it's going to be too slow. Now, you might be saying, why have you not said the thing for Reek, what you sow, Skeleton Crew, and Harrowing Ox? Well, I think they might actually go into a slightly different deck, so I've given each of these two stars instead. Okay, so that was me in the past. Uh, and generally speaking, I was right. So the excavation package as a standalone package never worked for uh, Death Knight. It just wasn't a thing. The combo, by the way, I was talking about with Harrowing Ox, which I kind of cut off, was to cheat out with Harrowing Ox Kale Fast, which would then let you cheat out Thaddeus, which is very funny because uh, Thaddeus right now is causing all kinds of issues with the meta right now, generating, like, insane... Uh, one turn kill decks, but that's not in this video. Uh, and in general speaking terms, some of these star ratings are pretty close. Now, if you didn't remember before, I typically used to five stars when I thought it was going to go into a tier one deck, four stars it would go into a tier two, three stars tier three, and then two would be something that would be tested but wouldn't work, and then one would just not ever be tested. If I'd given something like a one or a two, I'll give myself like a buy on it because actually the, it's a little bit fluffy where you draw the lines on that. Uh, for example, Pile of Bones, I think we were accurate on. I did see it get a bit of testing. There were some meme decks where you would copy its death rattle onto other minions. Uh, but it was too slow. It was just a meme. The Pile of Bones was too slow. One star was fine. Uh, crop Rotation also was one star. You could argue two stars. It did see some playing Chromatic and Necrotic Explosion decks. The card was recently buffed. It's seen some more testing in that. It sits around this one two star region. Uh, Harrowing Ox also, I think, was fair on a two-star. It didn't work out, this combo package. It was too inconsistent. When you did get the payoff of getting, you know, like, Hale, well, Harrowing Ox out, I think, on six, Kalefast on six, and Thaddeus on six, you basically won the game, but if you didn't, the deck just felt a little bit bad. Uh, where we got a little bit wrong is that where the excavation package did find a home was actually in the play Death Knight deck. Uh, and it was basically just as some sort of, like, value add... A lot of the Excavate cards were a bit more control orientated. The payoff for uh, getting the the Excavation, the Rat, which let you re-summon a minion, ended up being used more as a health regeneration. So you could stay alive so that eventually your plagues would kill your opponent. Reska did find its way into that deck, so arguably all of these cards should have been three star instead. I don't think Plague Death Knight ever made it into the tier two region. I think it always sat around tier three. And then just Excavate packages on their own were like, tearless. <laughs> anyway, to go on to the further cards. Then the other package was clearly meant for a climatic necrotic explosion rainbow death knight deck. We had more and poor, corpse farm, and fistful of corpses. For corpse generation and corpse spending extravaganza. Uh, sadly, I don't think it's going to work. Two stars, all of them. And then finally, the card that didn't really fit any of these is farmhand. It wouldn't go into the rainbow package. Maybe it could have gone into this, like, value excavation package because they were only showing one frost, one unholy. Uh, where I think it might see some plays in the Holy Death Knight, the triple rune, rune version of it. 
Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a necessity for that. I think it'll be tested, but then dropped. So I'm giving it two stars as well. Generally speaking, pretty good. I was actually pretty generous to Farmhand. I don't know why I didn't give it one star. I could see from a mile away that card wasn't ever going to work. Uh, more and Paul Corpse Farm, Fistful of Corpses. I think we're all fair. Two stars. I was right. The Climatic Necrotic Explosion deck didn't work. More and Paul is a pretty good card. It was hard to remove, but the payoff Climatic Necrotic Explosion wasn't good enough. The card has since been buffed, and it's still not good enough. A bit of context as well going into this. Just before I did the star rating, Reno was announced at, like, BlizzCon. And anything that involved a lot of minion-based stuff, I kind of docked a star off it because I just was like, yeah, this won't work. Reno will just kill it. I thought it was going to be the great expansion of Highlander decks. There were a lot of Highlander decks up and about the top decks, but I think in general, again, don't take me like on pure word value, but in general, the Highlander decks never made it to the very top of the pile, but they always hovered around there, right? Uh, but yeah, Climate and the Crotty Explosion was just bad. Now over to Demon Hunter World, and I think I might be the biggest Demon Hunter simp compared to some of the other people that have been reviewing this class. So I'm actually giving four of these cards four stars, because I think it'll be a tier two deck. Pocket Sand, on the other hand, I'm only going to give two stars to. I think it'll be tested in that deck, but two mana deal three damage is not going to be efficient enough. So to, you know, cut myself short from the past... I want to let people know that before this, and this wasn't for everyone again, but there were some people that looked at Demon Hunter and the Blind Eye Sharpshooter package. And this is the pre-nerf stuff, by the way, obviously. Uh, and they said Demon Hunter was going to be a stinky class. And sure, right now, Demon Hunter is, like, unbelievably weak. Like, a 37% win rate on, like, general HS replay for, like, across the ladder. But I saw the potential in Blind Eye Sharpshooter, and boy... Did it deliver? Out of the gates, this was your first tier 1 deck. Uh, these should all have been... Well, sorry, the Blind Eye Sharpshooter, the Parched Desperado, and the Oasis Outlaw should all have been 5 stars. They all made a, a hyper-aggressive deck, and it was really like one of the first decks that got nerfed. Pocky Sand, I would argue, was 1 star. It never really even got tested within that package. Load the Chamber, I think you could fairly say, was like a 2-3 star region card. Uh... It saw some play in the original versions of this deck because, you know, you're running a lot of Naga spell stuff. You're running a lot of Fel stuff. Eventually, the deck morphed, though, towards the uh, more aggressive cards that already existed in the game. And eventually, you could load the chamber. It was too slow. But Blind Eye Sharpshooter, and this created a bit of controversy in the community if you were following the, the Twitter scene. Uh, eventually this card got nerfed and now the deck is no longer tier 1. It's, I think Naga Demon Hunter is sitting low tier 2, high tier 3 type status. Uh, there was a lot of controversy whether or not you should put 1 mana on this card or take 2 health off. They took 2 health off and that kind of did the trick. Because the thing that was really obnoxious about it was that the, the very high level players would play this on 3. Knowing that the break point of like 5 health for most decks around turn 3, they couldn't deal damage to it. There was enough damage to it, sorry. They could deal damage, obviously, but not enough to kill it. Uh, so people would then combo the turn afterwards on 4. So you'd have like 4 mana to your combo. And spoilers, that was enough to kill most decks. So, yeah. I, I, again, I, I'm saying it as it, it is. I said this deck I thought was going to be really strong. I said it was going to be tier 2. It was tier 1 for a, a while at least, so... They definitely should have been 5 stars, not 4 stars. I need to believe in myself more. All of these cards will go potentially into that package. Snake Eyes, Gunslinger, Kirtris, Fan the Hammer, Bartender Bot, and Midnight Wolf. Four of them again I've given 4 stars to. I put together what I think the tier list will be now that I've seen all the cards. And I still think Rainbow Mage and Odin Warrior, they're going to be in the tier 1 state. I also think there is going to be a... An Excavate Warlock deck, which might have the the Abyssal Curse package in it, in there. And all three of those will have an important minion combo piece. And I think it's actually going to be worth having a deck built around something that is effectively mutinous, i.e. Gunslinger Kirtris, who can shoot minions in your hand. Okay, and then to add to that, I gave Fan the Hammer two stars because I didn't think it was going to make that deck. Uh, okay, I, I was wrong, okay? It turned out that the combo decks did wane slightly because this hyper-aggressive Demon Hunter deck became Tier 1. Uh, in my defense as well on this, 
people were really, really worried, and I think I was as well, that Snake Warlock was going to dominate the opening. Like, I think people thought that was going to be the tier one deck to beat. So I think it was fair enough. We'd just gone through a lot of Odin Warrior, a lot of Rainbow Mage. I think that's fair to say that people were scared that the combo decks would still reign supreme. In which case, Kurtris having like a mutinous like effect uh, could be really, really powerful. Unfortunately, within like two days, the snake got completely reworked. Well, not completely reworked, sorry. It got its like, what happened to it? Its mana cost got changed or something, then its effect got changed, and then its effect got changed and back to stealing health. I can't remember the exact combo of all that, but the deck never really got time to shine. It was just too obnoxious. I wouldn't even say strong. We'll get to that when we get to Warlock, but I don't actually think that deck ever reached tier 1 status. Uh, but it was just not fun to play against. Uh, as soon as that deck got killed, there was really not a lot of reason to run the the combo breaker package. Snake Eyes was, was too slow for the Naga deck, which I thought it was going to be. Uh, it should have probably got two stars. Kirchhoff probably should have got two stars. Fun the Hammer made that deck two stars. Bartendo Bot should be five stars, though. It was actually being run in the aggressive Naga Demon Hunter deck briefly, which was in tier one. Since then, and like all the changes, I think Bartender Bot has been dropped. Uh, but for a brief period, it was a five star card. And then Midnight Wolf is probably also two stars. Unfortunately for Demon Hunter, and this was kind of like, I think I mentioned this on the the card ratings for like my top cards of the expansion, which I think I put Kirchhoff in like nine or 10 or something. Demon Hunter was in a space going into this expansion where I didn't quite have enough strong cards. Uh, therefore, I thought going to a Highlander was going to make the deck hard to run. It was hard to generate. It was too weak. And simply put, you know, it just didn't work, right? It didn't come to fruition. It was also an unfortunate situation that the, probably one of the better decks running into this expansion was the, the Relic Demon Hunter package. But obviously you want to run two of the Relics, which was not conducive to running Reno, so... Or Kurtress, and therefore it just didn't work. So I I, I, I think my finger on the pulse of this day was a little bit off. Uh, I have since tried to make this work, and I did play some games where there were real crackers in the early expansions, but this deck has just completely fallen off a cliff. Especially since some of the nerfs to some of the like big Demon Hunter cards. Man, some of these dragons have insane swing potential, insane value turns, you know, effectively zero mana three fives. Seven mana copies your dragons. Uh, yeah, just really, really good stuff. And the Purified Dragoness just giving you infinite value over, you know, time. Very good. Uh, I still maybe am coping on this a little bit, but I've given all of them four stars. I think it's going to slot into tier two instead. There may also be a world, and this is also why I've given a lot of these four stars, where you don't actually run the Highlander variant, because the dragons are so insane on their own for value, that maybe you run like a... A big druid list with duplicates of the dragons and setting you just drop Bria Straza. Damn, I'm good. I read this so well. And I actually think I could be fair to say that the four stars on all of these, with the exception of Dragon Tales, which was wrong, was fair enough. I don't think Dragon Druid ever... You could ever argue it was exactly the, the best deck out there, like the tippy-toppiest. I think, though, I should have given all of these five stars. Again, I got a little bit knocked by Reno's existence, and it made me think that Riastraza was not going to be quite as good as it was. In the end, the the Highlander Dragon Druid deck tries to copy Riastraza so you can reapply it to get more dragons and just have, like, infinite value. But yeah, there were so many flavors of Dragon Druid. There were some Dragon Druids that dropped Riastraza and ran, like, the... Take to the Skies, they ran the Desert Nest Matrons, they ran the... The goddamn card I forget. It's a beast but has dragon in the name. The one that adds stats. They, they ran that instead and tutored for it. And you generated this giant wall of dragon golems. And it was too much for a lot of decks to deal with. There were then some flavors that ran Highlander, and there were some flavors that ran... Highlander cards, but ran duplicates in it. There was so much variety in the, the Dragon Druid package. I think it was fair to give all of these but Dragon Tales five stars instead. So you could say that I was, I was pretty right on this. My read was pretty good. The only card I got wrong was Dragon Tales. It turned out you just didn't need that extra bit of value. And then there were some decks that 
tutored for very specific choose one cards, in which case Dragon Tales would interrupt that. Uh, Dragon Tales was one star. It didn't work in the end. Then there was two final other outliers, Cactus Construct and Rehydrate, uh, which I'm giving one and two stars respectively. All right, I got this very wrong. Now, I'm going to hold my hands up here. If you could see my camera, you would see me holding my hands up. I didn't actually understand Cactus Construct's effect. I misread the card. I thought you only got the two cost... I, I thought you only got the minion on the board. I didn't think you'd get the card in your hand as well. I don't know why that... Because it just clearly says summon a copy of the card you discover. I, I For some reason, I thought it was like discover two cost minion and summon it to the board. Which I thought meant that the battle cries wouldn't be that important, therefore the card would be weak. It was actually five stars. It found its way into basically every single form of Druid. And Druid has had a lot of... Either low tier 1s or very high tier 2 decks, depending on what you want to classify tier 1 and tier 2. Uh, yeah, that card was actually nuts in the end. It's also a nature spell, so it worked pretty nice with Topior. Very good card. Uh, this might also surprise you. Rehydrate was pretty weak, right? You could argue it was a 1 star card. I actually think you have to give this 5 stars as well. If only for the brief period of time when people figured out the, the fire, Thaddeus. Druid deck, Rehydrate was a pretty important card in that to be a spell that was basically a zero ma mana spell. It got replaced as a fire spell, which would then go to the face eventually. Uh, sadly, Pyrotechnician has died for that deck at the cost of Thaddeus being the, the big problem, but I, I think depending on how you want to like analyze this, because that deck didn't really ever get full time to shine. It was like the patches were about to come through and suddenly this insane OTK deck just came from almost nowhere, and immediately the half team got scared and just banned Pyrotechnician. Since then, Faris has now created Toxic Sludge OTK decks instead, uh, and he's just causing a menace to the ladder in general, so... If you want to say, take everything but that period, Rehydrate was probably a one-star card, but for those, like, four or five days when the deck was discovered and before it got, like, obliterated, it wasn't even nerfed, like, they just removed the a key card in making the combo. It was arguably a five-star card because that deck was threatening to be a tier one deck, so... Uh, I think this might have been one of the strongest expansions ever for a class. I think you could have argued that every single card in this deck... That's right, in, in this reveal, or this release, at some point was a five-star card, with the exception of Dragon Tales, which I don't think ever made... F like a three star card even I think that always sat in one or two I remember people testing it but it just never came to fruition anyway that'll do it for this I want to keep these fairly short uh, if you want to see more of this I will go through and do my other star ratings sadly I'm gonna have to do showdown paladin at some point which I gave one star to and it's five stars <sighs> anyway I hope you enjoyed this if you did why don't you leave a like, comment, and subscribe? Everyone helps me out. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.